Oh, then. Is it fine? Can you hear me? Cool. Nice to see you. Uh, okay, before I forget, because it's like my company request, let me make a photo with you. You can smile, but it's not obligatory. Best audience today. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, for me, it's really nice to be here. I arrived like 4 a.m. Uh, right from Romanian testing conference after two days of workshops and then my flight today is cancelled and, that's, I don't know if that's me it's like speaker somewhere here it's like red dot during FedEx I, virtual one, okay. Uh, I have long hand, I can, I can catch it. Uh, yeah, so once again, it's, it's really great to be here. Uh, survived, still alive, my life will be happy. Uh, I will talk about IoT today. Like, um, funny thing is that I do not work with IoT anymore. I spent like five years uh, testing IoT devices, but I still do it on my own just for fun. Uh, so that's one of the most interesting topics for me. Uh, that's the thing I really like to do. I really like to talk to people. And uh, if I will find like two or three people who really want to check on your own, not even at the company after my speech, that's perfect. That's, that's, uh, that's my success, my personal success. And, ho and hopefully later you will find it, it's real fun because it's fun. And IoT uh, is just growing and growing. So um, yeah, before we start, click, click. No. Cool. Uh, as I said, I am David. Before I started speaking uh, quite frequently, uh, I was David. Now I can be uh, less international, so it's David. I came from Krakow in Poland, which is pretty far. So my travel here was 18 hours. Uh, and I was barely entered the, the country because I, the, the, the funny reason, uh, I had no printed uh, virtual visa. So that's the purpose of virtual visa. You have to print it uh, unless you want to be allowed to enter the country. OK, uh, but I'm here. So what I do at my free time, actually, we have two initiatives. It's Crack UA. And before I spent uh, some time working in Ukraine, and we and set up something called Ukraine QA. And probably it would be different city that would be something QA. Uh, and in my free time, I just travel, like here. And I like food, which is pretty dangerous to be here. Uh, like free. OK, anyway, let's talk about food later. Uh, back to the topic. That's uh, actually the story when I started. So when I started, it was 2012. And probably when you would ask someone what IoT is at that time, uh, maybe 5% of people would say, Okay, I can more or less say what it is. Now, if I would ask the same question, who of you can explain what IoT is? Still 5%, uh, which is cool because it's still growing, but it's still unknown. And it's uh, not surprising for me that still so little of you are uh, aware of that. So just, just, just before I was in um, Chicago during the conference, and because it's like market for most uh, technological companies, there were more people aware of what IoT is, uh, but still, it was much, much below 30%. Uh, so it's really not a lot, which is not a lot, which is surprising uh, if you know how many devices we have on the market. But about it in a, in a minute. Now, IoT, uh, that's the definition from Wikipedia. Uh, I would I like to explain it in just one sentence. Internet of Things is exactly the same as we define internet, but for real devices. So if you want to talk to your friends, you have communication, you send message, and maybe later, if, you, if there is proxy in the middle, uh, it's transformed, it makes some action, and so on. Exactly the same with IoT devices. Instead of humans, you have hardware devices in the middle. So we can have 
bulbs in the cellar. You can have lightning uh, environment. And those devices will communica communicate between each other. If you have smart home and you have a temperature regulator and then you have blinders, so you can, you can make it uh, lighter and darker, you can turn on bulb, you can, uh, you can dim it to much, much make it uh, lighter and darker. Everything can be connected and talking to each other. So that's exactly how we communicate, how we use internet, and that's the same for hardware devices. Everything depends on implementation, but simply uh, explaining that's IoT. So we have devices communicating between each other, sending messages, and then making some actions based on that message. And that's how I see it, because IoT, because it's internet, still internet, it's not only about hardware communicating between, between each other, but communicating with normal internet as well. So very often you have uh, IoT devices connected with social medias. There are many funny items. I work for the company doing cameras for pets. So uh, now just before the speech and before I split my coffee, I played with my cat, you know, because I'm here, so my cat is alone and, and sad. So I just turned on camera and then play with laser just to let him run, which is funny. And this IoT. Uh, actually, the market internet of pets is, 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 is super funny, uh, but it's a different, different topic. Uh, so that's how it's connected. You, you can have many challenges. There is a uh, mechanism implemented. It's called gamification. So you can have the same devices. I don't know, smart bump. And who of you uh, just made more steps during the day? Yeah. Or you can make the challenge, which is quite risky if you play with uh, women, uh, who lose more weight, right? And that's pretty common as well, because you have smart weight. Uh, this is data from 2016, and there was 6.4 billion. And it's a pretty real, reliable source, because it's Gartner. Just one year later, it was 8.4. Uh, it was 2016. Uh, uh, sorry, 17. Last year, it was over 11. And this year, it's not ended, of course, but it's predicted to be like up to 15. Till, till 2055, uh, there should be at least 25 billion devices. So or, more and more devices are connected. And what is the reason? Well, actually, because small, uh, small companies are doing prototypes, uh, defining technology, and so on. And then if it's successful, big companies are buying those small companies and producing own devices. There is nice implementation. It's, got, it's done by uh, Philips, which is called now Philips Hue. Before it was just device. Now it's a separate company. And then they, they installed 50,000 of devices uh, in Stadium Arena. It's pretty a lot. Uh, now, what is the... the, the, the General picture is very simple. So we have end user, very often like 80% using mobile device because we want to be mobile. We do not want to open a web page every time. We want to just open application. Uh, on the other side, we have hardware, whatever it is, like sensor bulbs, uh, cameras for pets. Uh, and some, somewhere between you have backend processing data, sending data, gathering, because because of so many devices, there is a lot of data. Uh, so big data here is a nice topic to, to think about as well. Uh, and you have different ways of communications. So it can be without any limit, like Wi-Fi, or limited by uh, distance, like Bluetooth or Zigbee and so on. Uh, which is better? Actually, there is no good answer because it depends on the purpose. It depends on the context. Bluetooth, for example, is great if you if we are talking about smartphone. So we can control only if you are inside. You don't want to allow someone from outside. You want to keep security. Uh, if, it, if it relates to camera, security camera, then probably Bluetooth is not the best option. Yeah, Being in range of Bluetooth, which is like 50 meters to uh, preview camera, well, I'm like now 7,000, so probably it's not for Bluetooth. Uh, so that simple picture, that's how I see it, and that's how Actually, 100 of devices works, if you, if you think about a uh, single device. Now, why there are so many challenges and why it can be so interesting in terms of, of testing? Uh, 
Uh, do you know the, 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 the actually idea of iceberg? So there is usually it's like you know coaching. Uh, you have one uh, ten percent above, which is success, and below you have sacrifice, hard work, uh, and so on. So at the top here we have something that the customer see, and usually it's mobile application and some functionalities to set up uh, actually your environment, your home environment or external environment. So very simple. UX uh, is the clue here to make it as simple as possible. Ideal uh, IoT device is the one that you can give to your grandma and you do not have to explain how to do it. But below you have hardware, so all that stuff that must be uh, designed, developed, and tested. And then you have firmware. So who knows what firmware is? Okay, uh, more people than, than about IoT. So firmware is basically software on hardware, which means that we test the same thing as software, but in terms of integration, we test it with hardware. So we have two levels, like uh, firmware itself and firmware with hardware. Now, that's um, what, I, what I said before, that small companies are trying to get to the market very, very, very fast, very quickly. Uh, and because of that, it's pretty painful because time to market is the clue. It's not about perfect quality. It's about quality good enough for the customer or good enough for your uh, investor. But it's about functionalities. So that's slightly different approach, slightly different, different work. And because of that, there are many challenges that some major companies uh, don't really have. At first, it's lack of time because you have always deadline. Yeah, you have meeting you with your investor. Or you have, uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, about it later. So lack of time that causes you are missing many of basic information and many of basic approaches that should be done. Actually, do documentation, that's something I have seen uh, eight years ago last time. And till that time, uh, I worked for three different startups and there was no documentation. So in that case, for example, we need to find a way to make documentation as a side effect of something. There is no time for, for documentation. The same with tests. You need to focus on one area to speed it up or use the tool that should allow you to speed it up. And not enough testers. Actually, when I joined, there was always one person uh, and about 100 developers. Uh, and the, at first, there was always my... Uh, like really, I was really proud of that person. Wow, just revived with all those people and just just doing testing now because no one wanted to do it, and it's like you know, uh, changing mind. At least one hundred people who have never tested. Just one person. If one person can click it, why do we need someone else? And it's it's it's, it's never-ending fight. Uh, now I'm fighting with that again. Uh, so we have two people. Then event-driven development. I don't know if there is such name, but I call it event driven, uh, which means you provide it, you, you want to provide some functionalities to uh, right to the event. Uh, CES is, 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 I think, the, mo the, the biggest one, technological one uh, in US, or to investor, because investor is waiting if he or she or the company wants to spend money. And the last thing, very, very, very chaotic environment and frequently changing environment, because Customer is the king in that case. Without customer, which usually is investor, we can do nothing because we have no money to survive. Uh, we have no business model. We are not the company who can earn money like big enough or even at all uh, to, to, to cover uh, our employees. So that's how we have to work. Those are rules we need to follow. Now, I you have a pretty small but uh, basic picture how the industry really works. And I think even if, the, if, even if IoT will be more popular and instead of like 5%, there will be 50% who can explain, uh, the approach to work at that companies won't change. And for now, let's focus on one simple scenario because I marked it as a use case or case study 
uh, we need to study something. Let's imagine a scenario and uh, we have two bulbs, one switch, and the scenario is like that. We create network with them and at first we want to use switch and then mobile app or it's reversed. Yeah, it's mobile app. So I click and my bulb is turned on or off and then I do the same using switch because from one side we have customer and hardware endpoint and then we have hardware, hardware, which is the, like the real IoT, communicating, devices communicating between each other. Uh, the scenario flow. So at the top you have all steps presented before. Closer activities, I mean, for example, if we talk about Selenium, if we talk about Appium, it's closing drivers, uh, it's cleaning environment, it's uh, disabling camera, which I will show later because we need to capture image somehow and so on. Before we have flashing and flashing means the same as app installation just for hardware. So we need to somehow deliver that software. Then we have uh, configuration and finally we can execute our test suite. In that case it's just one, uh, one suite, uh, one test case. And from that flow still it's pretty fine, it's pretty simple. We have three steps and then we have some free activities. Then that must be simple. Well, when you start thinking about the whole concept, what is below, it became more and more challenging. And that's my story from the very beginning when I started. Uh, now, the only difference is I realize that's challenging and still a lot of problems and I know I won't solve them very quick. Uh, at that time, I didn't even know that. So what are the challenges? Just the, just the main ones to not get too deep into details. At first, we need to somehow deliver that, soft, that software to hardware. So something we call firmware. For application, we have mobile app, right? And we inject that application, that's, that's fine. For, um, for web, we just deploy, right? If something went wrong, in a couple of seconds, we can revert. Even for desktop application, it's fine because we just install and if something goes wrong, in worst case, we ask the customer to uninstall and install again. And that's my case from like two weeks ago with another IoT company. For hardware, if something goes wrong, well, that's pain because you cannot do anything. Because you have no access. You want, we want to make our devices wireless. So how to connect to them? Then how to test in that case. The second thing, how we want to, how we can control our buttons. So the scenario is using mobile application as a one uh, action, but we have switch, which is the second action. For mobile app, probably a lot of you would solve the problem. Like, like we just create test automation, uh, we can use Apium or any other tool just to communicate. But later we do the same just using hardware. How to navigate. Uh, how to check if, there are, if our bulb really changed the color. Again, if we have mobile app, we can find the element and check the status. If it's on, if it's off, if the color is proper, but the status in mobile app doesn't have to be the same as the real behavior. And how to combine all those results and much more into a single one, how to process them and how to create our single point, single logic to aggregate and then say if it's working or not. And of course, much more. I just put four to not, uh, discourage you to try later because that's not the purpose of this speech. Um, and when I think about areas that should be covered, like probably half of them are known for you, but the second half is something you would have to invest, you'd have to learn on your own, mostly connected with electronics. And I like my uh, knowledge about electronics was, I think more or less the same like yours about IoT now. Uh, so not very high. I was just ambitious, maybe too much. Uh, I saw later why, uh, why, why, why that happened. Um, but really, if you, if you talk about automation and be just before, um, and there was a speech about, uh, coach potato. So there was about raspberry Pi and that's perfect to control because we have physical input and the outputs, not just software. 
but otherwise we do exactly the same. Okay, so my impression was that must be easy at first. There is no other way. That's what I, as a customer and guy joining the company, see. Just both and mobile app, click, turned on, click, turned off. Okay, that's fine. But then started like breaking down into smaller pieces. Well, it's not really like that. However, the most important thing which I, I learned and now doing fourth time in a row is to start with the good approach. Because if you have 100 people who have never tested or were, were forced to invest into quality, uh, there is no chance you can do it on your own because you do not have to, uh, enough capacity. So at first, try to find the common methodology. Well, usually it's one product, but different areas. It can be mobile app, it can be hardware team, firmware team, it can be um, front end, back end, but probably all of them follow different strategies. And then for us, for you as a testers or DevOps, uh, it's very hard to capture, it's very hard to catch, catch with them and be on the same page. Then facilitate process. So uh, that sounds like definition of Scrum Master, but it's not. It's more about, uh, I would say, agile leadership, uh, which is not really about IoT, but unfortunately, that's the, the small, usually small company. If not small, then surely dynamic one. So you need to invest your time in, in uh, facilitating processes. Then automation tools freedom. Uh, I suppose there is never good enough automation at the beginning. Even if there is, there are many, many other things to start. And it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be forced to do it. You should be able to investigate, to find the time to make mistakes, and just learn on them. Of course, if you do the same mistake twice or three times, then me as a CEO, CEO would fire you. But uh, if you have just one mistake, that's perfect. So uh, personally, I always, pre I always encourage my team members to make mistakes because then we have quick feedback that, okay, this approach won't work. Let's try another one. We can quickly react. Uh, then cons consider architecture, which is like obvious for developers, uh, or at least it should be, but very often it's not. Brainstorming session as a approach, as a tool to generate ideas, uh, because my assumption is that most of the people have no a lot of experience working because it's pretty new, uh, uh, pretty, pretty new area. And team autonomy, just to feel free to make those mistakes and then learn from them. Now, that's a big picture of automation. So we have something I got called master scheduler, it can be whatever. And uh, what you should remember from that, as you see, there is a cloud at the top and on the left. So that's how we want to follow, put into the cloud everything, because it simplifies, it's cheaper, as, and it's easier to maintain. The problem with IoT is that you cannot put hardware device into cloud. I mean, you can buy the space rocket, but it's not that cloud we want to send our software or hardware. Uh, so it must be stored at the company somewhere. We must have something like laboratory, and then if our communication protocol is uh, not Wi-Fi only, we need to have mobile devices at our laboratory as well. So farm devices of, uh, farm of mobile devices, well, not really. If we want to use Bluetooth and our hardware is at the company, then our mobile phone have, have to be at the company as well. So those two areas, unfortunately, and whatever will be done, like the world evolving, like more intelligence, uh, more artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on, you just cannot send hardware to, uh, to Amazon and say, that, say them, this guys, because you turn on the, the device and another mobile phone to be in range of Bluetooth. Well, that's, that's not the best approach. Uh, so that's really worth to remember. Any IoT devices uh, must be stored locally. And that's how pipeline, uh, simplified pipeline can work. So we have a few places when it can be triggered. So 
the earliest one is something I call I, I called core build. Core is just uh, it's a firmware core. It's the basic logic on our uh, on our hardware. Why it's separate? Because then we have functional logic. So we can say to our LED dial, hey, just turn on, and that's part of core. But then we have when it has to be turned on. Well, for example, when the connection is lost with the internet, the LED should be red, and so on. So we have functions and we have core. One is very low level. The second one is uh, on a much higher level of abstraction. And it shouldn't be combined. It's like, uh, I don't know if you are follower or lover of that. Uh, I'm talking about full stack approach. It's really nice, but then you are missing the, 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 the expert. So it's good to have someone that's connecting everything. But for me, having only uh, full stack developers at the company is very risky. And the same, it's, it's here. Then we have hardware devices connected somewhere at our company, and it's triggered either by core or functional uh, pull request to, to our repository. And then we run tests and run the build. But at the same time, we have mobile application. If there is something changed in mobile application, the same, where you install app and execute not just mobile app uh, testing, but the most important is integration with our hardware, because they communicate exactly, uh, they must communicate at the same level. That's why I said about Internet of Things are two ha uh, many hardware devices communicating between each others. If one is changed, the second must be able to understood it. And the same if we change in uh, hardware. And then finally, we can have some data parsing. We can have higher level of testing, uh, we can have integration or end-to-end -end, or both of them. You just cannot skip com combining hardware with mobile app. And it depends on time, it depends on the context, but at least one of them, integration and end-to-end -to -end, must be executed. And then we have like normal process. We have some data that should be parsed. We can, uh, we can connect with uh, our reporting system. Um, it can be Kibana, it can be uh, Grafana. It's just the tool. And connect it with our project management tool uh, and as far as I know, like at least 80% of uh, companies are using Jira for some reason. So it's, it's, it's global. Now, the question that uh, was on our side when starting was if it's worth to automate. Well, considering everything that was before, it's definitely worth. I would say even it's must. Because still, um, I don't know if, 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 if you have heard something like that, but in, in Poland we say that every good specialist can be exchanged by finite number of students. Uh, that's not the best approach. And for us it's super funny, right? Because you can just bring students. But uh, it won't work. You, can, you don't want to make repetitive work, like just turning on buttons. It's not the way. So automation at least for the major scenarios here is, is, the, is the key. Um, now what are the requirements for our environment? Well, at first it must be cheap because we are a startup, we are technological companies and we are waiting for or looking for investors. Um, then simplicity, to do it fast, we have to do it simple. So follow KISS, do you know KISS rule? From, yeah, from, from, from development side, it's exactly the same. Then modularity. So we have three steps. Let's try to uh, separate them into different areas and about it in a minute. Uh, scalability, because there's a, like we have 25 million in five years. So we need to scale it. Performance is a very important issue here. And reliability. We don't want to uh, have flaky tests like anywhere. Now we have quick introduction done. Let's try to prototype, let's try to write something, and let's try to automate our tests. Um, that's module flashing. And we have again Raspberry Pi as uh, during the last speech. And the clue here is we have one part at the, um, in the corner, which is everything connected. We have debugger just to flash, to send our firmware. And we have our um, instance. 
somehow communicating with our hardware, uh, probably with cloud as well, to pull the firmware, to store it somewhere, and then just push firmware to the, to the real device. Um, one note here, because I want to present you some tick and trips as well. If you have device connected to 230 or 110, just remember, as physics, you don't want to lose your notebook uh, or fingers, in worst case. Uh, so try to isolate it. And it can be very costful. That's the, the lesson from, from my history. Uh, remember about it. Now, switch control. I said it's easy, but I was too ambitious. Uh, that's something I did after two weeks without any knowledge about electronics. So actually learning everything from the scratch. Actually it worked and it was really fun to do it. Uh, what was wrong? Well, then I discovered I can order something like that from AliExpress paying like $3. Uh, exactly the same, more consistent, more reliable because no wires. Um, so that's, that's, that's my uh, another tip. If you want to solve something, just try, probably there is something similar on the market and you can customize to your purpose. Uh, regarding software, we have inheritance of the, the, the following class. That's the best approach. And that's for most of the hardware devices. So we have bits and, and bytes, setting some, uh, some outputs. And that for belt, for example, it can be turned off and turned on. It's binary one, binary, binary zero. Then uh, we have releasing time. So we can dim, it can be li uh, lighter or darker. And that's another layer of, of uh, abstraction. And then having that, we can easily control our logic. For example, if we want to make factory reset, there is some special sequence to not allow the customer to do it uh, by accident. And that's another layer. Uh, what's important because it seems obvious, well, we still operate on hardware device. And at first we have GPIO, which are physical outputs. So we need to remember that we are somehow bounded by, by physics. And the third thing, which is vision system. We want to capture the real behavior. So we have bulb, we want to know if it's red or green and so on. And we have mobile app to turn on, uh, turn off, actually changing the state of our hardware device. Um, that's dirty cheap approach. And uh, do you know what is GDPR? It's general protection. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, we have it. So I'm not allowed to public personal data. Uh, so this is GDPR improved. Uh, now, for us, the main goal was to make it simple to implement and, again, make it scalable, make scalability uh, very easy to maintain. So the idea was to prepare a matrix with devices inside and then just split it into uh, many parts. This is uh, another chip approach. I think there is Logitech internet camera somewhere because we, we didn't need really uh, something better. Then hood and then we have the image. Uh, actually, why there is the black hood? Because we want to have unchanged environment. If they would be like a sunny day or clouded day, we would have very flaky tests. We need to isolate our environment. That's just like, it's like Docker for software. We want to make uh, our isolated environment. And uh, that's another uh, trap I made. That was my expectation. So I trigger a signal, I gather matrix, value of matrix. For example, if I have nine of them, and then I get an output. Well, simple as that. Well, in reality, that was more like that. Uh, it's image processing. So have you ever worked with image processing? Any of you? Yeah, so it can be painful, like really painful. Uh, that was very helpful, uh, surprisingly for me later, because one of the, the products, except for like laser for cats, uh, that was treat launcher. So that you had like pet cookies and it was thrown into the air, like to let your uh, pet be really happy about being fit. And we put just camera and then checking if trees were really launched what is the vector, what is the speed, and so on. And it was still for testing. So that knowledge, well, for some reason, really surprisingly, was uh, useful for me later. And that's why I mentioned here, because you never know. 
one, one tip here, just be careful about uh, parameters for the camera. What I found out, if you have physical device, if you want to, uh, as we do, have separate environment, like Docker, for example, container, when you create the new one, everything is resetted somehow. Or you can just disconnect and connect again your camera, everything will be changed again. So just be careful, it's very often the reason of flakiness. Now, we have implemented our three items, and somewhere in parallel, of course, we have mobile uh, app testing, which I didn't mention here, because it's probably the, something that most of you know, uh, but we cannot forget about it, about the customer point of view. So it's brainstorming session, it's the output from brainstorming session. Now, what is important? Well, by thinking about this simple scenario, just turn off and turn on, we were able to, by using those small components like vision system, like uh, switch controller and so on, created much more complex use cases, like really from the customer perspective. Okay, I want to turn on, but then my wife came and said, I want to have it pink because that's my internal feng shui. And then someone came and said, I want to sleep and just turn it off. Uh, like scenario, turn it on using switch and turn it off using mobile device, it's not real scenario. It's just to check uh, simple functionality. But again, having them, it's much easier to create another. And that's um, broad view of the implementation. So we have four small blocks just to, like Lego bricks, to join them together. Uh, three of them I mentioned, and the mobile app with some capabilities that uh, you know probably what are capabilities, or you surely know. Uh, you are at APM conference, right? Uh, now, let's create scenarios. Now, who of you is familiar with uh, behavior-driven development approach? Okay, it's given when then, right? Well, I was never the lover of that uh, for very long. Now it changed. So uh, like two days ago in, in Cluj, in Romania, uh, I did BDD workshop because like uh, I changed my mind slightly. But here, uh, the very good approach, if you make it smart, is that using just more TDD approach, you can easily write it in a way that are that is easy understandable to understand what's going on here in test. Well, we just make factory reset to make everything clear, like clear environment, clear setup. Wake up our switch, then add device, and check if it's added. Simple, right? I joined the company, I'm the new employee. Uh, I have no one who can explain me what's going on here, but I understand because I can easily read it. The same here, we can reset Bluetooth model, then we can wake up our switch, then add device, find it, and make factory reset again. And the last one is just sharing our setup using um, Gmail or Google Drive. And here is everything clear. Now, what happens if we have more something like that? Well, probably you would have to spend some time reading it, and there is you no know, 100% of certainty that uh, you will understand it. And here, uh, what can help you is BDD. Now, when you read it, uh, I will give you like 30 seconds. It's much more understandable what's going on here. We have some associations, we have some channels on the switch, and we have some real behavior of our bulb. And reading it, that is really simple. Uh, what, is, what is nice in terms of uh, coding, moving from the previous step, like having this, to this approach, which is much more readable, is not, it, it's not very costful. You have all the steps prepared because you made steps here. You just add another layer of abstraction. So I suggest if you have something complex, uh, it doesn't have to be for everything, but for things that are hardly understandable, you can use another approach. BDD is not the only one, uh, but that's what I found out very helpful. Now, that's set up, our environment set up the final one. So in the middle one, we have something combining all those results like input from bobs, uh, controlling switch, and so on. Then we have mobile apps here. We have cloud 
uh, sharing both firmware and mobile app. And then we have uh, like further steps with our pipeline, like continuous delivery approach. So communicating with another environment like builders, deploying, uh, maybe, maybe sending some data to Jira and so on. But uh, under the line with test result is the physical environment. So we have phones, we have uh, Raspberry Pis, we have switches. And that's the output, that's kind of dashboard to make it more colorful because uh, Jenkins is pretty rush, uh, rough and, and uh, like very hard to encourage product owners or product people to look at it. Uh, if you have more colors with your office in the background, then okay, I can look at it. And oh, it is red. And then finally make some reaction. So we have that automation. We have one scenario that we started thinking about at the beginning. And as a result, we get the environment that can be easily scaled to much uh, more complicated from one side and much closer to the real user behavior. Well, takeaways. I have four minutes for takeaways. That's great. The first one, think, act, but think big, but act small. And that's how we started. So we have uh, just IoT environment, some lighting industry, but then when you start breaking it down, you think in smaller parts. How should I implement my vision environment? How should I control my switch? Uh, how should I handle installing firmware? And so on. So that's what I, what, what I mean by think small. Uh, by, think uh, by think big, but act small. Now, one of the first sentences I said today, encourage your people to make mistakes. Without that, you are not able to deliver solution quickly. Just remember to not repeat it again, the same, the same thing, especially in terms of 230 volts. Repeating it is like 5K dollars, approximately, from my experience. Uh, when everything explodes, but uh, it's a different story. It's more fun. Uh, well, it depends who are you talking to. If it's your boss or C CEO, uh, and it's not fun when you talk about it like during the conference, this is more fun. Um, unleash team creativity, brainstorming session. For example, this is just one of the mechanisms. You can find the answers. There are like hundreds of ideas. Find two or three of them useful. That's enough, you can speed up. Focus on interoperab interoperability. Uh, now we have Android and iOS, like almost 50-50. We have Mac and we have Windows, uh, maybe not 50-50, but still we have quite equally distributed. Think about it in terms of implementation of test environment. We are not focused on, uh, for example, uh, Google Chrome only. Modularity, you have your Lego bricks, think about scenario and just join them. Build your tower, oh actually tower is not really stable. So I don't know, build your tank as better protection. Um, Risk-based risk testing, who's familiar with that? Okay, I really encourage you to get deeper into that because what's important and it's not for IoT only, it's for my current uh, company as well. If you have hundreds of scenarios, you want to somehow choose what is worth to automate because actually you can automate everything. But is it worth? Well, not really. It's good to find what is the, the balance between the risk and the value we can achieve. For IoT, it's even more important because we have not three levels of testing, but five or six of them. So. It's not just for IoT, and I, I encourage you to check it. Maybe it will be useful for you, and if not, then you have knowledge during, uh, maybe it will be useful during another interviews, who knows. Physics, IoT is about physics, you just need to remember, oh, who likes physics? Wow, that's good, so that's for you. Uh, now I like, before I, I didn't really, uh, just have it, keep it in mind. Then IoT is hardware, which is physics as well. So there are slightly other risks, there are slightly other factors, uh, you just need to know. And the most important thing, 
security. And I said nothing about it. Why? Because it's the topic for another couple of hours. Uh, I have no time to give some examples, unfortunately, but I encourage you to just Google security, IoT, and then you will get a lot of nice examples what went wrong. And that's it, thank you very much. If you have any questions, just reach me here because I have flight in like four hours. Uh, so yeah, better catch me online. Thanks. Thank you so much. We would not have time for questions, we'll have to.